right now to uh, welcome to the program a man who is uh, going to be very busy for the next uh, six or eight months. He is the director of the Sarasota Ballet. His name is Ian Webb, and uh, the schedule just came out, so we wanted to find out uh, what's going to be coming up as far as ballet goes here in Sarasota. And Ian, thanks for joining us today. How are you? I'm very good, thanks. How are you? Good, good to talk to you. Appreciate uh, you taking a few minutes. I know it's going to be kind of a busy time for you. The schedule uh, just came out, but I'm sure rehearsals are uh, well underway or will be shortly, right? Yeah, no, they're on the way. I've just literally spent all day in the studio and come up now. I've left 15 minutes early to come up to speak to you from the studio, so it's, um, it gives me a chance to sit down. <laughs> this, is your, uh, this is your third year coming up uh, with, the, with the ballet in Sosa? This is uh, the, my third season. How's it been for you to, to come down here? I mean, it's, it's a town probably unlike any other you've been in, right? Culture-wise, Sarasota. It's been fantastic, really. The um, I think everybody was very excited about the sort of change. Um, and then when I arrived, people sort of wasn't quite sure because I think with my background, I came, you know, I spent 18 years dancing with the Royal Ballet. And I think they expected, you know, your Swan Lakes and things like this. And I opened the season with a ballet called The Two Pigeons. So they were a little bit shocked. You know. <laughs> and it's, you know, it was a ballet that not many people know in America, but was a, is a masterpiece. Um, and it was a huge success. One of the challenges uh, when you put together a schedule for, for a season, uh, do, you, do you try and balance out maybe one type of ballet against another, or dramatic as opposed to maybe more of a lighthearted one, or what's, what's your process? Well, basically, I, there's two thoughts. Sometimes if we do a, a full length, like we're opening this season with um, Sir Peter Wright's Giselle, which is one of the most, you know, the most beautiful romantic ballet, um, and his production is one of the best in the world. Um, so if it's a full length, that's different, but I, I do quite a lot of trip builds. And what I try to do is I try to, in a way, give something classical, something more theatrical and dramatic, and then something maybe a little bit modern or a little bit more off the wall than they used to. So it's a real variety. And I think that formula seems to be um, seems to be working. There's a lot of ballet uh, fans down here, and maybe some folks that don't know much about it, but they do appreciate uh, the talent that goes into it. And uh, I guess you'll probably be doing a lot of these type of interviews and, and promoting the, the ballet. I guess that, that's another part of the job, uh, not just putting it together and directing it, but getting out there and marketing it, right? Uh, the, yeah, that's right. I mean, it's the, I'm in charge of the whole um, organization, so I'm sort of in the studio teaching the ballets. Um, I program the advice what, what ballet should go. Um, I liaise with all the designers and the music, um, and then there's all the publicity, and then there's our school as well. So it's um, it, it's um, a lot of work, but it, it's very rewarding. Let's probably go over the schedule, Ian. Uh, just run it down real quick. Maybe a word or two about uh, about the theme of each ballet coming up. We've actually just come back from Houston, where we performed um, the trilogy by Dominic Walsh, and it was a joint uh, production with his dancing and my dance. Um, we're actually, some of the company are then going to go into a joint production with the Oslo Rep um, in Contact, the Broadway production of Contact. Um, but then the, our real season kicks off on the 27th of November with um, Sir Peter Wright Chazelle. Um, and we've also got uh, two of our wonderful principal dancers will be performing that, but we've also got um, what's probably the greatest partnership of today in the dance world, um, sort of if you like, the modern version of Muriel and Fontaine, and that's uh, Johan Koberg and Alina Kochikura. Mm. They're the main stars of the Royal Valley, and they're going to fly in and do two performances for me. Um, so that's a wonderful start to the official season. We go straight into Nutcracker, which is by our former director, Robert De Warren. Um, and then in January, um, we really started to go, we, we're going to do an Ashton Ballet, Sir Frederick Ashton Ballet called Les Rendezvous. And we've been picked up by the New York Times on a couple of occasions for doing the Ashton Ballet. So this is one again for this season. Um, Peter Darrell, um, a fellow, he was the founder of Scottish Ballet in England. And I revived his production of a fellow many years ago. And so that's, it means something for me to bring back. Um, we've got um, a real fun piece by Matthew Bourne, the Tony Award winning choreographer, um, called Boutique. And he based it on a Massine Ballet, which was choreographed in 1860. And he's done it in 1960. And it was originally based in a, a toy shop. He's done it in Carnaby Street. So there's the part of there between Ken and Barbie, the Beatles. It's a real, real go down 
memory lane of the 60s. We then go straight into um, a very beautiful classical ballet called Vespri, um, and then the middle section of that program is going to be lots of pas de deux and things, which will include um, the bronze idol from the Bayadere, and also we're recreating um, a solo that Anna Pavlova made called The Dragonfly, and plus some, you know, one of the traditional pas de deux and things. And then again, a, a quite a nice modern piece called um, in Neapolitana, which is by our resident choreographer Dominic Walsh, um, which is a real fun piece and a real flair of the Italian people and the Italian families. Um, we then come into the Opera House um, on the 2nd of April, again with a triple bill. And this is when I mean about the variety of things. We've got um, a, a ballet, which is all two twos called Rococo Variations. And then we're going to dance for the first time a ballet by Christopher Wilder, who was the former um, resident choreographer for New York City Ballet. Um, and he's very supportive of everything I've done here. So he's going to allow us to do one of his ballets for the first time, called There Where She Loves. Um, and then we're going to finish off that with um, John Cranko's Pineapple Pole, which is um, Sullivan music and is that real sort of um, Gulbub and Sullivan type flair to this ballet. Um, we then close the season with um, a George Balanchine ballet called uh, Donizetti Variation. We're going to do a world premiere, so I can't talk too much about that because it's all new and, not, and we don't even know what it's about. Um, and then we'll be finishing with Matthew Bourne's Infernal Gallop. And the reason for that is Matthew Bourne, as I said before, was the, um, one of the most sought after choreographers of today. He won Tony Awards um, for his production to Um Broadway. We were the first company um, in the world to have one of his ballads in the repertoire. And so this, but, you know, people keep asking to see it again. So I'm delighted that he's allowed me to present that once more. And we're talking with uh, Ian Webb. And Ian, uh, quite a lineup uh, you have right there. And uh, just want to let the folks know where they can go uh, get some more information, get out the website, and uh, where people can get uh, the rundown if they want to get tickets. Yes, I mean, it's, um, it's a tremendous feat. I know I shouldn't say that. But, um, for, but anyhow, if you contact us via the website, which is and um, we've got all the information about our subscriptions and single tickets. Um, well, Ian, we appreciate you taking a few minutes. I know you're uh, in a busy schedule right now, but uh, our audience wanted to hear about uh, the schedule, and we look forward to talking to you throughout the season a couple of times, perhaps. But uh, thanks for oh, joining yeah. us today. Okay, perfect, and I look forward to seeing you there. Good. Thank you, Ian.